Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how we can interpret the discriminant. Now, the discriminant is this part right here. So when we're using the quadratic formula, it's the expression b squared minus 4ac. So that's the part under the square root sign right over there. Now, what it does is it lets you know how many real numbered solutions are in the quadratic equation without solving the equation or graphing it. So all you need to know is what that number under the root sign is, whether it's positive, negative, or equal to zero. So here we've got the three different situations. We've got if the discriminant is positive, if the discriminant is negative, and if the discriminant is equal to zero. So what is that number under the square root sign? So if it is positive, we are going to have two roots for the equation. And that means that the graph has two zeros. It crosses the x-axis in two places. So a possible graph could be something like this or something like this right, where it distinctively crosses at two places. All right, now if it's negative, we are going to find that the equation does not have any roots, and the graph has no zeros. And a possible graph of that, now the reason why this, it looks like this. So you see, the graph does not cross the x-axis at all. So if you notice, uh, if you have a positive a value, like in this graph right here, uh, it's going to be opening up and it never crosses the x-axis, so it's always in the positive. And over here, if we have a negative a value, it never crosses the x either and it's always, it's got a range of negative numbers only. Okay, and if we have the discriminant equaling to zero, so that's right over here, b squared minus 4ac equals zero, we end up with one root for the equation, and the graph has one zero. So that means that our quadratic crosses, well, it doesn't really cross. You know what it does? It just touches it. It just touches it in one place and then it kind of bounces back up. So it only ever touches the x-axis in one place. So we call it having one root. It doesn't really cross it, just touches it and goes right back. All right, so for this example right here, what I'd like you to do is figure out what the discriminant is so that you could determine the nature of the roots. You can state the nature of the roots. And when we say what's the nature of the roots, we wanna know how many roots there are. Are there two, are there one, or are there none? All right, so for this question, we've got A is equal to one, B is equal to three, and C is equal to negative seven. All right, so we need b squared minus 4ac. That's the only thing we need to substitute in for. We've got 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7. And right over here, we can see that we've got a negative times a negative, which is going to give us a positive number. So we know the answer right now. We're going to have two real roots. But if we work it all out, we end up with 37. And that is greater than zero, so here we have two real roots. Okay, now moving on to the next question. So for this question here, what we need to do is we need to make sure that it is written properly. So let's make sure we have everything over to one side. Make it equal to zero. Then you've got A equals three, B equals two, C equals one, B squared minus four AC 
is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times uh, 3. And then we end up with 4 minus 12. And we see here we have a negative 8. So since b squared minus 4ac uh, is equal to negative 8, which is negative, we can say that there are no real roots. And moving on to our next example here, we've got x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4. So we can say that a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to 9 over 4. All right, so for b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, we have negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9 over 4. And that cancels out nicely right there. So we've got 9 minus 9. That equals 0. So we've got our discriminant, which is equal to 0. And that tells us that there is 1 real root. Okay, so now, okay, so for this question here, uh, just make sure you have everything written over onto one side. So x squared minus four equals zero. And if you notice here, there is a zero x term. Okay, so a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to negative 4. All right, and our, when we put that into our discriminant, we end up with 0 squared minus 4 times negative 4. That gives us positive 16. So we have a positive number, and we also notice that this is a... Whoops, that is a perfect square right there. Okay, now here, uh, what we'd like to do is find the values of k so that the following equation has real and equal roots. So in other words, that means that uh, the two roots uh, that are the same, okay, so, uh, or they're equal on either side. So uh, let's first take this from the question that what we want is we want b squared minus 4ac to equal 0 and we want to use the fact that b is equal to k plus 6 from right over here. Using this in our discriminant set equal to 0, we have 0 equals k plus 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4, and that gives us k squared plus 12k plus 20. And we can factor this to get our two values of k. So k plus 10 and k plus 2 factors out very nicely. And we end up with k is either minus 10 or k is negative 2. All right, now what we want to do is we want to uh, verify these results and see what our actual values of x is going to be using our original equation that we were given at the top of the question. What we want to do is we want to substitute in k equals negative 10 and k equals negative 2 to see what we end up with. Substituting k equals negative 10 in here gives us x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And substituting k equals negative 2 in here gives us x squared plus 4x uh, plus 4 equals 0. 
Now what we want to do is we want to take these two, factor them out to see what we end up with for our x values. So here we see factoring the equation in blue, we end up with x minus 2 all squared. So we've got a perfect square there, and we've got a root of 2. And factoring out our purple equation here, we end up with x plus 2 all squared, and we end up with a root of negative 2. All right, so now for this question here, we want to know for what m values will our equation have real and unequal roots? Uh, so basically what this means is we want two real roots. The condition that we must satisfy is that our discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, that has to be positive. So whatever m value is going to give that to us, that's what we want to know. All right, so we've got 8 squared minus 4 times 1 minus m, since our m value is our c value, and that has to be equal to 0. So now let's look at this and think about what's happening with the numbers. So you've got 64 plus 4m, and whatever m value satisfies the condition that it's positive, that's what we want. So if we look at this, continue to solve it, we end up with, you can subtract a 64, subtract a 64, you've got 4m being greater than negative 64. So think of what m values do that. And we note that any value of m that is greater than negative 16 will satisfy our condition. And this last example here is given the following equation for what values of k would the roots not be real. So this all is anchored around the idea that the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, what's going to make this negative? All right, so our k value is b, so we end up with k squared minus 4 times 2 times 2 equals 0. So k squared minus 16 uh, is less than 0, sorry, I should say. So what values of k is going to give me a number that's going to make this part less than zero or a negative number. So now, looking at this, we know that probably plus four and minus four are going to be important to our solution. So let's look at negative four. What happens if we put a negative four in here? Well, it makes it zero, but let's say we take a value that's less than negative four. So say negative five. So if we substitute negative five in here, we get 25 minus 16, that's not negative. How about if we try negative three? Negative three gives us nine, nine minus 16. Well, that is a negative number. Okay, good. So we know that our K value has to be greater than negative four. And now let's go in the other direction and test out some other numbers. So if we take a positive four, we know that positive four is gonna make this zero, so that's not good. And if we take uh, a number that's bigger than four, with like let's say five, put that in here, we get 25 minus 16, that's gonna give us a positive number here. We don't want that. How about we try a number like three? Uh, that's less than our 4. That's going to give us 9 minus 16. That's a negative number. So that's the other one, other condition we want. So the values of k has to be in between negative 4 and positive 4. This concludes this video, which takes you through the quadratic formula and the discriminant, more importantly, which lets us know how many roots there are in any given quadratic equation without solving it. 
So the next video in this series is uh, some word problems and there's a few more to come along. So have a look at the questions, see if you can do them and uh, practice, practice, practice.